Hello, I'm Churchill, one of the pastors here at Pinnacle Village, and welcome to day five of our Solar G 12 Ways of Christmas. We will continue to look at the traditional Christmas symbols and how they help tell the story of our Savior's birth. So for today, we will be looking at stockings and how they represent family during the Christmas season. Now, many of us may be familiar with the Christmas saying that goes, the stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas would soon be there. This little excerpt originally comes from Clement Clark Moore's poem, A Visit from St. Nicholas, written in 1823. And according to the Smithsonian Magazine, the most popular legend about why stockings are hung during Christmas goes something like this. A recently widowed man and father of three girls was having a tough time making ends meet. Even though his daughters were beautiful, he worried that their impoverished status would make it impossible for them to marry. St. Nicholas was wandering through the town where the man lived and heard villagers discussing that family's plight. He wanted to help, but knew the man would refuse any kind of charity directly. Instead, one night, he slid down the chimney of the family's house and filled the girl's recently laundered stockings, which happened to be drying by the fire, with gold coins. And then he disappeared. The girls awoke in the morning, overjoyed upon discovering the bounty. Because of St. Nick's generosity, the daughters were now eligible to wed, and their father could rest easy that they wouldn't fall into lonely despair. While this legend may vary from place to place, the message of the story remains the same all throughout, that a family was in great need and someone else made a way. That a family was in great need and someone else made a way. And in essence, that is the story of Christmas, that a fallen and messy world was in great need of a savior and Jesus made a way. So we will return back to Luke chapter two, verses 15 to 19 for our scripture for today. That when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. And if you were to look at all the characters in this Christmas story, it may seem like the most random group of people coming together. Of course, you have Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. And you can look at this little picture of a family with their newborn in a stable and already call that a beautiful family scene. But joining them were others. Angels and shepherds all coming together for the birth of the Savior for the reason of the season, for the gift of a new life. And it is this picture of people coming together for Christ that I believe captures the very essence of the church and the church as our larger family. So there are just two points I would like for us to carry for today. That number one, through Jesus, God invites us to a larger family. That through Jesus, God invites us to his larger family. From Galatians chapter four, verses four to seven. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. So whether you have a family of your own, whether you are living alone or abroad, whether you have your own messy family drama, through Christ, God offers us sonship. He brings us into a larger family that is not defined by blood nor marital status. He now calls us sons and daughters. 
And it is the church that is the best representation of God's larger family. I myself am a only child. When I was younger, it was always just me, my mom, and my dad. But through the grace of God, he gave us a church. He gave us a larger family outside of our own little world. He gave us people to love, people to pray for, and people to fight for. That though I may be an only child, I never felt like an only child. That through the church, God gave me spiritual mothers and fathers in the form of my senior pastors. God gave me older brothers and sisters to mentor and walk with me as a young man learning to be a pastor. God gave me brothers and sisters in the form of my friends, our youth, and our Sunday school kids, that I have the privilege and blessing to love, pray for, and mentor as well. God gave me them. And all that I am are just bits and pieces of the church and the larger family that he has called me to. So while everyone may be a part of a family, many are still looking for someone to be a family to them. Which leads us to our second point for today. That we are to be a family that invites others to God's larger family. We are to be a family that invites others to God's larger family. Going back to Luke 2, verse 19 from the message version, because I like how it puts it. That Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. And when you take time to look back at all the works and wonders that God has done in and through your own families, you cannot help but be grateful that all the things that we hold dear and deep within ourselves should drive us to do likewise for someone else. To extend that invitation to God's larger family, to someone else, that's what it means to be partners in the gospel. So I understand Paul when he says in Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 to 6, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. Always in every prayer of mine for you, all making my prayer with joy. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. There may be no such thing as a perfect family. The Bible itself is full of imperfect and messy stories about family matters. Cain killed his brother Abel. Joseph's brother sold him into slavery. David committed adultery with Bathsheba and killed her husband. But even in all the imperfect details we wish we could change about our own families, we have a father that is perfect in every way. That even in all the imperfect details we wish we could change about our own families, we have a father that is perfect in every way. So in partnership with the village and with the church, may we be a family that points back to the unconditional love of the Heavenly Father that points back to the reason for the season, Jesus, the Savior who came to save our own families in need from lonely despair. And if you are a part of a Christian household, there's a high likelihood that you have this decorated somewhere along the walls of your house, maybe even next to the stockings. <laughs> and it is this verse that I would like to leave us with as we end. From Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That through Jesus, God invites us to his larger family. And as a family, we must also extend that invitation to others to be a part of God's larger family. So as we end... The gray hairs on my parents' head always remind me that I don't have forever with them. So in the here and now, may we make the most of every opportunity we have to love our own families, to pray for them, to be partners in sharing the gospel. That with the church, may we bring others to God's larger family. 
Pastor Amber reminded us earlier this week that a joy shared is a joy made double. So as we end, I would like to put our own twist to that. For a love that we have been given is a love that we must also share. For a love that we have been given is a love that we must also share. So at this time, I would like to invite us into a word of prayer as we end. And Father God, we just come before you to once again thank you for the gift of Jesus, to thank you for the gift of the church, for the gift of our own immediate families and the friends that have become our families. That Father God, we pray that whatever we may be going through during this holiday season, whether it is messy, whether it is lonely, or filled with drama, we find all our hope, all our love, our comfort and security, and all that you are as our Heavenly Father. So we pray for a missional heart that will just go beyond ourselves to extend that invitation to others who are looking for someone to be a family to them. That we pray that all that we are may just be a vessel and a conduit from your heart to their heart. So we just continue to come before you as one family during this holiday season. Lord, to you be all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.